Hey everybody, Clint here, and welcome back to another episode of Walkthrough. And uh, as you can see today, we've got a Model 1 Genesis here. Um, this is something I should have should have uh, had a video on long, long before now. But uh, here we are, and uh, just want to do a teardown, cleaning and reassembly video on one of these um, before I did the walkthrough on how we're uh, going to modify this to output stereo from the back here with some uh, uh, some RCA jacks instead of the uh, headphone jack on the front here. So, uh, you know, let's get to this. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, just get your uh, Genesis and flip it over here. And as you can see, you're going to have six screws, uh, three along the front and three along the back that you have to remove. They're just Phillips head screws. so. Just get yourself a Phillips head screwdriver or a, a, like a power driver like I've got here. Um, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is torque sensing. Um, so I can adjust the torque with this. Um, you don't want to get one that's too strong or you can strip these, uh, these screw posts on the system out since they are made of plastic. But uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove these screws here and uh, we'll get underway. All right, so now that we've got our six screws out, we just uh, flip this back over here. And uh, now we're just going to remove the top, just uh, easy enough. Just grab it like this and lift up. Now, don't pull away immediately uh, too hard because you've got a cable underneath here that's connecting the LED to the board. Um, now, you could disconnect it from the board, but it's, it's a really fragile connector. And I would just recommend the easier path, which is bend up the legs to the LED and just uh, pull the connector right off. So now just keep in mind the red plugs into the longer leg of the uh, LED. But uh, for now, I'm just going to move this out of the way and keep uh, tearing this puppy apart. All right, so now we got this big old RF shield in the way. Um, and to disconnect, uh, get that off, just got three screws in the front, one screw on the side, three screws in the back, and this one up top here that we have to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, you're going to want to keep in mind that the screw that we took out of the top is different from the other screws. It's uh, copper colored and uh, has a different thread pitch. So uh, remember that when you uh, put this back together. But all right, now we should just be able to lift up from the front and pull this RF shield out of the way. All right, now we've got uh, different things we just want to pull out here. It makes it easier. This is the uh, uh, AC jack. Uh, just connects into the board there. You can leave it connected, you can disconnect it, whatever you want. Um, but we've got our headphone jack here. It just lifts off those two little posts and just move it out of the way. And uh, now, to remove the board, you need to remove these three screws and this uh, heat sink here. Now these are similar to the screws that hold the uh, RF shell down, but they are longer. So keep that in mind. Uh, don't just clump them in there. And then you have to remove these two screws on the sides of the cartridge port itself. And uh, those are the same size as well, so you can actually put those together. Um, and now you should be able to just, uh, oh wait. Forgot about one screw. There's one screw in the uh, front left corner here that I always forget about. Um, and it's shorter than the others, so now we should just be able to lift it out. Should being the operative word. Not quite sure, am I missing a screw here? Uh, I see. This bottom shielding was bent down over the board here. Um, I have not seen that in any Model 1 that I've opened before, so I guess that is something to keep in mind. Uh, so just bend that up a little, and there we go, it lifts right out. Um, and uh, just set that aside for now. And uh, now, should just be able to lift up this. RF shield. There we go. 
And uh, now we've pretty much got it disassembled, except for one thing. There's this in the back. And it may be glued in and it may not. Um, this one seems to be stuck in there pretty good. So I am just going to leave it in. It looks like it may be glued in. But this is what's used. Uh, you can see it there. That is what's used to screw in uh, the modem peripheral. Um, that, uh, oddly enough, I don't know if they had other plans for this to be used with, but uh, uh, this model doesn't have the port and doesn't even have the hole for the port for that to plug into. So it's just funny that they have that in there. But uh, you can just leave that in if it's glued in. And then uh, just go ahead and move this, remove this port cover for cleaning. So there you have it. Um, that's pretty much pulled apart. So let's get the top cover here and finish getting it apart. Um, now, you can get out the reset switch by pushing the two tabs in on the side and it will come right out. Then we can remove the cartridge port here. Three screws. Now, here's a little tip. If you want to play Mega Drive games uh, in your Genesis, all you need to do is remove those two little pieces there. See what I'm pointing at? These two little things are what keep you from inserting a Mega Drive cartridge into your Genesis. Uh, simply by removing those, you will now be able to, re to insert those cartridges. But now, um, you could disassemble this a little further by taking these out, but I just really don't see a need to, unless they're sticky or something like that, like somebody spilled coke all over them or something like that. Um, but uh, then you can even go even further if you wanted to change out your LEDs, push in these uh, two tabs here, and you can pull out the little cover that shows the power on, and just push the uh, LED out the top here. So change out the LED that way. Um, and then um, you've got your sliders here for your uh, your headphone jack and your power switch. Those you can't actually remove. As you can see they've melted the plastic to hold these in place so they aren't removable. Which is unfortunate but uh, that's the way it goes. So this thing is ready to be cleaned. Um, and what I'll do is I will just get Windex in here and clean it with a, uh, a toothbrush. Same goes for these switches, um, these cracks here as well. Um, this white stuff here will probably have to be removed with an, a magic eraser. And I'm going to warn you on these Genesis, um, they're kind of a, a little bit smoother texture. So using a uh, magic eraser on this can dull it very quickly. and it will look very different from the rest of the uh, Genesis, but I will do that in a minute. But, uh, let's go ahead and get the board here real quick. And uh, I'm going to take a look at something here. So, um, if you've watched my, uh, any of my other videos where I, I uh, clean up systems, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, take care of this cartridge slot here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a can of compressed air, or you can use an air compressor. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get in here, without any foreign elements, any potential debris. Now, I'm going to get one of my uh, anti-static cloths here that I use to clean cartridges with, cartridge contacts. And I'm going to get uh, my Bass Pro Shops rewards card that I never use, and some isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to get this some alcohol on it. I'm going to set that 
that aside. I'm going to get the card here. Just going to fold it over. Now we're just going to go down to the cartridge slot. And just rock it around and see what comes out of there. See what kind of dirt we get. It's actually not too bad. It's getting some, but you know, just uh, go back and forth on the entire connector here. Make sure we're getting it nice and clean. And yeah, I mean, I'd say that it didn't really take a whole lot of dirt off, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out, dry that uh, isopropyl up, pull the dust out of the connectors there for the controllers. Now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull any dust off this motherboard. So oh, it wasn't too dirty, um, but uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to inspect this board. I mean, you got lots of capacitors all over the place on this thing. Um, check for leaky ones. Check for ones that are bursting. Um, I mean, you can tell if you've got a really leaky one. You'll see uh, crusty electrolytic fluid all over the place. Um, if it's really bad, you'll see it. Uh, it can eat through these traces. Uh, that go between the various parts and components of the board. Um, if it's if the top of it's bulging or sides are bulging in any way, it needs to be replaced immediately. Um, so yeah, inspect your caps, your any resistors, see if anything's damaged on here before we you know even bother putting it back together. And there are a ton under this uh, uh, this heat shield here. So just go ahead and visually inspect those and. Uh, Everything looks good here, so um, I'm going to say we're good to go. I am just going to go ahead and uh, clean up the outside, and then I will be right back uh, and we'll reassemble this thing. So I'll see you in a second. All right, everybody, welcome back. And as you can see, we've got the uh, top cleaned up here. Managed to get those scrapes off the side here um, without uh, too much pressure from the uh, magic eraser but it's uh, looking quite a bit better cleaned all the dirt out of here and uh, but uh, one thing I want to do is as you can hear I don't like that it's freely but I don't like that noise um, so what I am gonna do is I am going to get our all famous super lube here because uh, not regular lube will do. And uh, as I've showed you in other videos, I'm going to use this to uh, quiet that up. So I'm just going to apply it along the bottom of where the uh, volume slider goes, as well as the power switch. Make sure that they don't make any noise. See how that worked. Uh -huh. Sounds sounds a lot better. They move nice and freely. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and reassemble this. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, get our LED here and just just put it back through holes here. Then just uh, get our uh, cover here. There we go. It's nice and flush. Now uh, just get our reset switch here. And uh, slanted side goes, uh, as you see I'm holding it, it's kind of slanted. Um, it just goes with the contour of the Genesis. Uh, let me put this away. All right, now let's flip it over, and we're going to stick our cartridge slot back on. And 
All right, now we can move that back aside while we reassemble the bottom, which is a piece of cake and just blew the dust out of here basically. And uh, now I just need our lower RF shield. No need. There we go. Let me give you a little bit of resistance going back in. Now, just go ahead and drop the board back in. I'm actually going to reposition this the wires underneath the heat sink there. Just put these wires in there so they're not just hanging around. And it just goes upside down. You may have to move it a little bit more once you put the top cover back on. And reposition this headphone jack. Make sure that you're not blocking the reset right there. Reset the button on the board. Now, we will start by taking that shorter screw that goes right here. Oh, I'm sorry, and that's why I missed it. It's covered up by the headphone jack, so never mind, don't put that in yet. <laughs> and then uh, go ahead and just Put that screw in. Now we can put in the headphone jack. Now I uh, get the two screws that went on the sides of the cartridge slot. And now the last three that uh, hold down the side of this heat sink here. All right. Now we can just put this uh, top heat shield, uh, RF shield back on. Start with our uh, copper colored screw, which goes right here next to this red stuff. Red epoxy or something that they put on there and then these black ones and we install this part on. Now that you've got those screws in, just put the top cover back on. Just remember, longer leg goes in the red for positive, shorter leg on the white. Now when you reinstall this connector, make sure you bend the legs back down. Make sure you bend them down until they're like touching the top cover because if you don't, they'll ground out on this RF shield and your, the LED won't work. So now notice the position of your uh, on-off switch and your volume slider. Just uh, switch to off and put that all the way down and then switch this to top, off and this all the way down and go ahead and just put the top cover back on. And like I said, it may give you a little bit of trouble back here with this uh, DC jack. You may have to fiddle with it. Oh, I just moved the uh, volume slider there. There we go. Now make sure your volume slider's working, your uh, switch, your reset switch are moving, uh, moving freely. Now just go ahead and put this uh, cover back on. And just uh, put these six screws back in.
All right, so there we have it. Uh, that is uh, pretty simple to do. I mean, um, it's pretty brainless to open up one of these Model 1 Genesis's and clean them. And Genesis, Genesis, Genesi, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, but yeah, that's really all we have to do. Um, but uh, keep uh, tuned in for uh, the next episode of Walkthrough. Um, which hopefully I'll be putting up later this week, hopefully this weekend. And uh, we're going to go over how to uh, put some RCA jacks on the back of this Genesis here and get some stereo out the back. Even, uh, even do some composite uh, in case you want to stick with that. Even though I uh, talked to you guys about these uh, HD retrovision cables that were perfect for the Genesis here. but. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this was helpful, and uh, I will see you guys with the next video. Later.